Welcome to the next part of the paint swatch videos. This is the blues. So we'll start with our last purple there, or one of the last purples, Windsor Violet. Which is really deep dark toned. Really dark. Really the colour of irises. Mm. Semi transparent colour. And it is very staining. It does have a good light fast rating, and I've done my own test, which it was fine, but I think it can be bad in other brands it's been shown to be bad but it's okay here yeah you can make some really interesting browns when you mix this color with warm yellows so that's that's good Next we've got an M grey in colour, which is a dual pigment colour, totally non-essential. As you can see it's a mixture of ultramarine and, and uh, violet. It's easily to easy to mix yourself. And you can just see it's a bluer violet colour. And it's very granulating because both constituents granulate, so... Um, Semi-transparent. Yeah. Not essential. And then French Ultramarine. Windsor Newtons. So... This is one of my favourite blues, definitely. And I have three here. And I actually do have more, but I'm only going to show three. And that's because they, the French Ultramarines have a, uh, they're a warmer shade. They've got some red in there. And then they go through to a greener shade. So you have slightly cooler and warmer versions of ultramarine. That's why they have more than one in each brand. And it's this one have, um, does granulate quite a lot. It's very transparent. It's a lovely colour. I, I do like it. Maybe maybe the granulation is not so good for some botanical subjects. But they, it mixes really lovely purples and violets. This pigment was created in 1828 um, as a synthetic but chemically identical alternative to the really expensive um, pigment derived from lapis lazuli. So, yes, 1828. And the next ultramarine is from Daniel Smith. Again, very, it's very similar. And then I've got Ultramarine Finest by Finest by Schminker. And this is, I think it's the greenest of my Ultramarines, although not, not very much. And also the least granulating. So this is the one I use the most actually because of that. 
it doesn't granulate as much, it's semi-transparent. And I've heard good things about an ultramarine by a company called White Knights. Um, they were extremely good value. So that's one to look out for. Vindanthrin next. Windsor Newton. And this is a very dark toned colour, again like the Windsor Violet. So this one's good for painting darker greens for darker coloured leaves. It looks like the colour of denim to me. It's, it's a good one to have just for that extra tone, deep tone that you get. It's semi-transparent and uh, this pigment is a modern anthraquinone vat pigment. So yeah, and other in other brands it's named this Indanthrone and also anthraquinone blue. So yeah, and then next we've got a Winsor Newton's Cobalt is a very it's probably right in the middle the primary blue I don't think it has any red or green bias particularly but I'd say it was a good very close to in the middle it's a quite a pale light toned color It does granulate as well, like cobalts do. Oh uh, yeah, it's semi-transparent this one by Winsor Newton as well. But um, this is a much more expensive pigment than ultramarine. And um, it was discovered even earlier than the ultramarine, so earlier than 1828, uh, but by another French chemist. And so, yeah, yeah, see, you can see it granulates, but it's also low staining, so it's liftable as well. And then we've got the M. Graham's cobalt next to it, which does have a deeper tone. It's a, a more intense colour to it, like all M. Graham pigments. It's just got that. more intensity to it. This one is semi-opaque as opposed to the semi-transparent but it does tint out two very transparent washes so and you see it's granulating as well there but yeah cornflower blue <laughs> and then we've got Windsor blue red shade so this is a, a phthalo cyanin blue, very, very intense. So the phthalo blues are renowned for their incredibly intense and vibrancy. And too much for some artists, <laughs> but it's a lovely smooth, no t no textures to this one so if you don't like granulation it's a good one but because of its yeah because it's so heavily staining it, it's very hard to lift so that will definitely stain the paper so if you didn't want that attribute and um, but it's very transparent yeah so it's a it's a modern organic pigment which um, contains copper so it does have a metal in there. Then we've got Prussian Blue next by Winsor Newton. I don't think it's an essential colour really at all. It, I must say I hardly ever use it. It's quite weak tinting strength. And I, I 
do use it sometimes for lichen blues or mixing lichen colours. And so yeah, it's you can see it's a mid greenish, look more green tint to it. It is transparent and, and it does have a textured finish to it as well. We can get it a bit darker. But it apparently has a quite a strange attribute um, in that it fades in the light, but if you put it in a dark place, it will restore back to how it was so not so good <laughs> in a finished artwork <laughs> to keep hanging it in the wardrobe to get it back but yeah <laughs> so not an essential colour at all and then we've got a DS that Daniel Smith pigment here called manganese blue hue and you can see it's a thalo colour PB15 and it's uh, a colour as an alternative to the old manganese that was very the toxic manganese colour. Yeah, so it's a cool blue, you see, nice and cool. And it's definitely not as staining as the other thalos. And it does have a texture to it as well. I'm having trouble getting a smooth wash with that there. Let's see, I'll go in again. So yeah, it's liftable this one. It's transparent. But yeah, so this is the non-toxic alternative to the discontinued manganese blue. As you can see, it's the hue. Next, we've got Windsor Blue Green Shade. Again, a phthalo cyanin blue. But colon 3 this time. So it fades out to much greener, greener tints. So this one would mix really acid greens with, with a lemon yellow, especially. And uh, yeah, it's transparent, very staining like the thalos. Next, cerulean. That's how I say it. <laughs> um, it's a mid to light greenish cool blue derived from cobalt tin oxide so again it's a cobalt pigment so if you're averse to cobalt pigments this one is also one of those and it has texture to it a flocculation texture And um, it was discovered in 1805 and, and the name comes from the Latin Ceruleum, which means sky blue, for obvious reasons there. It's semi-opaque colour and uh, very lightly staining, so you'd be able to lift that one. So, oh, next we've got a... Holbein colour called marine blue and this is phthalo cyanin turquoise so another phthalo but I think this one doesn't have copper content in it but again you see how deeply intense that is and vivid and obviously why it's called marine blue. It's a very ocean colour. Nice pigment. Um, if you like very intense and very staining. And that one is semi-transparent. But nice. 
in other brands you will find it called Thalo Turquoise. Um, but yes. Next we've got PG50 by Daniel Smith, which is cobalt teal. Again, another cobalt colour. It is a lovely colour, this turquoise. It's um, definitely the colour of some bird's eggs. Has a slight flop, uh, a slight has a slight texture to it, like the cobalts do. It's also non-staining, so very easy to lift. And that one is semi-transparent. So nice, a lovely, lovely colour. And then on to my last one here, um, Windsor Green Blue Shade. So, again, a thalo, a thalo colour, but a thalo green. You can see how intense it is and, and obviously going to be very highly staining and transparent just like the other ones. It is a very unnatural green especially for botanical art but it does mix well. I do find it a good mixer. You add it with warm yellows to get a lovely sap green and quin golds you get a lovely sap green. Um, I've also used it in feather iridescences and I use it in landscapes as well, so I do find it a good colour. Um, it also mixes really great dark tones with different red hues. So yeah, that's a really good one to experiment with for mixing purposes. Right, okay, that will do for now, so bye for now.